Hi guys, so I just wanted to do the demo I could not do in class. Uh, these are optic um, demo. And so here I have a piece of glass. Here the index of refraction is about 1.5, which means that when light is going to go through it, it's going to slow down. So instead of having a speed of 186, 86,000 miles per second, it's going to be 186,000 divided by 1.5. So that's the meaning of uh, index of refraction. So you see, I have a laser here. It's red, so it's one wavelength, one frequency. And I don't know if you can see, but as it goes through the glass here, it's going in a straight line. Okay, so nothing special about that. However, if I rotate the, the piece here, I don't know if you can see what's happening. Now, light, light is bending. Okay. So it doesn't go in a straight line. It's going to bend here. So this is called refraction. And then it's bending again, such as the, the output beam here is parallel to the input beam. So this refraction happens each time light goes from one medium. So that will be air. To another B medium, well, the speed of light is smaller, to another yet medium. And uh, you have a very easy equation that's going to give you the uh, um, incident, um, the, the, the refracted angle, right? So it's called Snell's law. It's going to tell you by how much light is going to burn, by how much it's going to, uh, instead of going in a straight line, it's going to, band and that depends on the index of refraction so we we discussed that the best way to see it is that imagine that you have you know maybe kids holding hand there one kid here it's going to be a high first so it's going to slow down so light will band here right so you can do the same thing for example if you have a prism so if you have a prism, you can make a rainbow, but I cannot make a rainbow here because uh, it's red light. So rainbow you can get only with um, white light, and I will show you. But you see what's happening here. Light can get full, so it's getting full. But if if I if I if I do it the right way, you see that light is reflected. It means that light gets inside the prism, inside the, the 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 medium, but here it cannot leave. It's trapped inside. So we talk about that briefly in the lecture. Trapped light. It's it's called total reflection, right? So it means light cannot escape. So it's trapped inside. So that's why diamonds are so shiny, because diamonds have a very high index of refraction, and that means that it will be easily reflected back inside, okay, before it leaves the diamond. So you see here you have total, yeah, you have total reflection, okay, it's reflected. Some of it here is refracted, but I can have total reflection if I do it the right way. So it means here light cannot leave the medium. It will be reflected and then it can leave the medium. Okay. So this is used, for example, in binocular. Binocular, uh, there, there is a, um, the first stage is, uh, I mean, inside the binocular, you have to reflect light. You, you can look at the picture or, or look at my lecture why, but, um, Instead of using mirror, they use prism. So you can use prism to reflect light. Okay. Because, because mirror can be scratched and they can change shape more easily. I can try to do the same thing. I have a very, very tiny piece of glass here. And you see, still you can see. So if I do it this way, you see light can escape. Okay. But if I do it that way, you see that light is being trapped okay, inside. So it cannot escape here, it cannot escape there. Then it's reflected again, and then it can escape. Okay, so that's one thing I wanted to show you. 
the the other thing is so now I have more than okay here so that's what we call here a converging lens so it's converging because it's refracted in such a way that when the ray leave the lens, they're going to focus at one point. So that point here is called the focal point. The distance here between the center of the lens and that point here is called the focal. Um, this is the focal point, sorry. And between the center and that point is called the focal lens. Okay. Thicker, thicker is the lens, more converging the, the rays are, 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 are going to do. So it, it will be more focused here. So if I take another lens here, thinner one, you see that the focal point is farther away. So those lens, you, you use them every day. It's very cheap to get. They are actually magnifying glass okay so if i have a magnifying glass that's a converging lens and if you can see here but it will make the ray converge as well see that i don't know if you can see it see the, the ray converge so this is just a converging glass so you use those lenses if you are Far sighted, so that means you cannot see close, but you can see far. These are very cheap. You can find them at the dollar stores, you know, for a few dollars. They are very cheap to make. And you, so some, it, it happens that as we get older, for example, the muscle in, in the, in the eyes cannot adjust very well. So we need that. It can happen also to people if they have, um, uh, I that um, instead of having a spherical eye, everything is so that will be a spherical eye here. But instead of having a nice spherical eye, it's flattened in this direction. So that means the image will be formed behind the retina. So you need the Converging lens to bring back the image here on, on the, in the back of the eye, in the screen here. And then you have the rod here. And then you have the nervous, uh, the optic nerve that will connect to the brain. Okay. So that's when you want to use converging lens. Then you have the opposite. You have diverging lens, right? I don't know if you can see you here, but What's happening is that the, the rays diverge. Okay, it's also called concave, because you see it makes like a cave. That's how I remember these are concave. The other one are con uh, convex. And here, the focal point is between the source of light and the lens. So it's somewhere there. And everything happens like the rays are coming from that focal point. So these, these are diverging lens and they are the most expensive to make. So that's why it costs so much if you are short sighted like me. So you cannot see things far. So they have to make the curve here just right. So you can see. So that happens instead of having a nice and spherical eye. Now it's flattened in this direction. Okay. So which means that the image of something far away. So you see, you have those parallel ray going through your eye. So that will be your eye here. The pupil is here. The image will be, because everything is flattened here, the image will be here before, before the retina, before the screen. So you need to find, you have to use a diverging lens to push the image back on the retina there, okay? So if you cannot see far, that's because your eye is flattened in this direction. If you cannot see close, it's because it's flattened in that direction or because you are old and the muscle cannot adjust anymore, okay? So that was in the nutshell. You have all kind of uh, shape here. So if I have this, for example, 
that also make the light converge at one point. Okay, so this is called the focal length. Again, you can have it's like half half of that uh, convex lens or, or converging lens. It has the same effect. And here you have your diverging lens, half of it, but it also works, and light seems to come from a focal point here. Okay? You also have, interestingly, a mirror, so flat mirror. Of course, you see, light will be reflected, so it's like it's bouncing off, and the angle here of incidence is the same as the reflected angle. And then you have concave, so you see it's concave because it makes a cave, concave mirror that will behave like a convex lens. So it means light from very far away. You see, you have all those rays parallel to each other. That means it's coming from a far away source relative to the size of the lens, to its uh, focal length. And, and you see, it's converging at one point, right? So you use that technology, for example, to detect a radio wave, for example, in a radio telescope. You, you get the radio wave from space, and then it's going to be reflected here at one point where you can put a sensor. Or you can use that to uh, bake a pizza if you want under the sun. So all the light and the energy from the radiation will be focused here at that point. So that's a concave mirror, and it behaves like a convex lens. And it's also used in telescopes nowadays. We don't use lenses anymore because lens, we, we want those uh, opening, telescope openings, the, 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 the opening of a telescope, the objective of the telescope to be as big as possible, okay, to avoid uh, diffraction, to have a, the best resolution ever. So I refer you to the lecture. So, but we don't use lenses anymore because lens, they can slack. So we use mirror, okay? So that will be a reflective telescope. So when you have a telescope, let's say this is the telescope here, light comes from the star that you're looking at or the galaxy. So the rays are all parallel to each other. And then the image will be at the focus point here, okay? So you will have a very small image. So the, the idea of the first uh, mirror here, the primary mirror, is to bring the image of a faraway galaxy or faraway nebula close here at that point, but it will be very small. So then you can use a secondary mirror or, or a, converging lens to make it bigger, like a magnifying glass, right? So, but that's a real image that you get. Now you have here the opposite, so now it's a convex mirror, but it behaves like a concave, concave lens, okay? You see the light will diverge now, you see? Then you can have weird stuff here, it's called diffusion. You see how light does not know exactly which way to go? Okay, so this is called diffusion. It's when the surface here is not smooth, so it doesn't reflect well. Okay? Now, the other thing I wanted to show you is that with a prism, we can get, um, with a prism like this, um, you, you can get, uh, a rainbow, but I don't have sun here. So in uh, in physics, what they do or astronomy, instead of using a prism, they use what is called a diffraction grating. So you can look it up how it works. But if I use a white light, I should be able to see a rainbow. So it's not that easy to show, but I'm going to try. Okay, so that's kind of my screen here. That will be my sun. So I have a flashlight. I have the diffraction grating. 
and somewhere I don't know if you can see it, there is a rainbow on the side. Can you see the rainbow? No, it's hard to see with the camera here. I don't think you can see it because there is so much reflection, but it's there, okay? So it's called the diffraction rating. You can get those, get those, they are very cheap. Okay, the other thing I wanted to show you is, um, so this is a magnifying glass, and again, these are very cheap. Okay, so what I wanted to show you is that with a magnifying glass, magnifying glass, when, when the, the object, so the, the source of light is inside, inside the focal length. So that means the focal, uh, the, the focal point is farther away. So if I put the object here between the center um, at, at a distance here, so the distance between the center of the lens and the object is smaller than the focal length, so it's very close, what I get here is what we call the virtual image. Okay, because you can see it only with your eyes. If I put a screen here, of course, I cannot see anything. So this is a virtual image, okay? The image is beyond here, okay? So beyond the lens. And what it does, it, it's magnifying, but it only works when it's very close, okay? So the distance between the object and the lens is smaller than the focal distance. Okay, so that's called the magnifying glass. However, if I put the object far away, so at a distance larger than the focal length. So what's, what I'm going to have, I don't know if you will be able to see, but let's go back to the screen. Oops, that's me. I don't know if you can, how can you can see the screen here? So if you do that, you can do that at home if it doesn't work. But what you see here, I don't know if you can see it though, but you can see here, I can see the outside. Of, uh, I can see the window, I can see the window, and I can see the building upside down on the screen. So I'm not sure you can see, but all you have to do is to get a, a dollar store's magnifying glass. And in that case, the object is really far away. So the image will be here, and it's going to be a real image because I can see it on the screen, right? That, that distance here will be actually the, uh, uh, fo the um, focal length. Okay, so I can adjust here. I really see the building over there upside down. I'm not sure you will be able to see, but that will be an experiment to do for you. Okay, the last thing I uh, wanted to show you is polarization. So polarization, they are these, uh, you, you can make them with those slides here. You can, can look at the lecture. So what it does is when you have an electromagnetic waves, they are not all planar, plane, plane wave, right? So the, that means the electric field will uh, oscillate in this direction. And then you have another surimposed wave with the electric field oscillating in this direction and that direction, so in all directions, okay? So when you have a Polaroid, like this one, what it does is it's going to polarize the, the, the electromagnetic wave. So it will force the electric field, for example, to oscillate only in this direction and the magnetic field to oscillate only that in that direction. So it's going to eliminate, eliminate everything else. So what do you think is going to happen if I have another one here? But now, 
I move them perpendicular to each other. So you cannot see anything, right? Because here it selects only the uh, vertical electric field. And this one eliminated, so eliminate that. So it's uh, it's called polarization. Now, the most interesting thing, but I don't know if I can show you that, is that the light coming from your computer, your laptop here, is pol already polarized. So if I have my slide in front of my computer, it's going to be all dark. If I if I move it, uh, so you see here. I don't know if you can see. So here you see your computer, but as I'm going to rotate the slide. Now you don't see it, right? That means light coming from your computer is polarized. So it means the electric field here is, uh, is, is it, uh, it's up and down. Okay. So I light only up and down electric field, but if I rotate the slide, I'm going to block it. Okay. So this is called polarization. Okay. So I'm sorry. I could not do it in class and, um, if you have any question, let me know.